Gucci, Gucci, Italian pronunciation, is an Italian high-end luxury fashion house based in Florence, Italy. Its product lines include handbags, ready-to-wear, footwear, accessories, and home decoration, and it licenses its name and branding to Coty, Inc. for fragrance and cosmetics under the name Gucci Beauty. Gucci was founded in 1921 by Guccio Gucci in Florence, Tuscany. Under the direction of Aldo Gucci, Gucci became a worldwide known brand, an icon of the Italian Dolce Vita. Following family feuds during the 1980s, the Gucci family was entirely ousted from the capital of the company by 1993. After this crisis, the brand was revived with a provocative porno chic props. In 1999, Gucci was acquired by the French conglomerate Pinot Printemps Redout, which later became Keering. During the 2010s, Gucci became an iconic geek chic brand. In 2019, Gucci operated 487 stores for 17,157 employees, and generated 9.628 billion euros in sales. Marco Bizzari is CEO of Gucci since December 2014, and Alessandro Michel Creative Director since January 2015. Gucci is a subsidiary of the French luxury group Keering. History 1921 Birth in Florence The Gucci family claims its origins are rooted in the merchant city of Florence since around 1410. Guccio Giovan Battista Jason to Dario Maria Gucci left Florence for Paris, and settled in London in 1897 to work at the high-end Savoy Hotel. While working as a bellhop there, he would load-slash-unload the luggage of the hotel's wealthy clients, learning about their tastes in fashion, quality, fabrics, and traveling conditions. He later worked four years for the company De Wagons Litz the European rail company that specialized in upscale travel leisure, thus further enhancing his experience with luxurious traveling lifestyles. After World War I, he worked for the maker of fine luggage Franzi. In 1921, Guccio Gucci bought his own shop on Via della Vigna Nuova in Florence, Azienda Individual Guccio Gucci, where he sold imported leather luggage. He also opened a small workshop to have his own leather goods made by local craftsmen. Eventually, a larger workshop had to be acquired to house Gucci's 60 artisans. In 1935, the invasion of Ethiopia by Mussolini led the League of Nations to impose a trade embargo on Italy. Leather became scarce, pushing Guccio Gucci to introduce other fabrics in the composition of the products such as raffia, wicker, wood, linen, and jute. The rhombi motif, a Gucci signature, was created. The Guccis developed a new tanning technique to produce Cuyo Grasso, which became a Gucci trademark. In 1937, Gucci launched its handbags. Guccio's wife and children all worked in the shop. Aldo, the son of Guccio, became increasingly involved in the family company since he started working there in 1925. He convinced his father to grow by opening a new shop in Rome in 1938, and launched more Gucci accessories. During World War II, the artisans of Gucci worked on making boots for the Italian infantry. The company made handbags of cotton canvas rather than leather during World War II as a result of material shortages. The canvas, however, was distinguished by a signature double G symbol combined with prominent red and green bands. After the war, the Gucci crest, which showed a shield and armored knight surrounded by a ribbon inscribed with the family name, became synonymous with the city of Florence. Post-war I Dolce Vita slash I. None. 1980s Gucci's family feud. In 1969, Giorgio, the son of Aldo, had sparked the first family feud by launching Gucci Boutique on his own, which was finally reabsorbed by the family group in 1972. During the 1980s, the Gucci saga eroded the family held top management of the company and fed the press headlines. 
Paolo Gucci, son of Aldo, tried to launch the brand Gucci Plus on his own. Aldo was criticized for developing most of the international business under Gucci America, which he owned. In 1982, to ease tensions in the family, the Gucci Group was consolidated and became a publicly traded company, Guccio Gucci Spa. In May 1983, Rodolfo died. His son Maurizio Gucci inherited his father's majority stake in the company and launched a legal war against his uncle Aldo for full control of Gucci. Maurizio Gucci took over the company's direction. In 1986, Aldo Gucci, 81, with only 16.7% of Gucci left in his possession, was sentenced to a year in prison for tax evasion. The artwork of the Gucci Galleria was liquidated. In 1988, Maurizio Gucci sold almost 47.8% of Gucci to the Bahrain-based investment fund Invest Corp, and withheld the other 50% despite the family disputes. Between 1981 and 1987, the sales of trademarked Gucci products reached $400 million, and $227 million in 1990 alone. The 1980s were characterized by a mass production of Gucci products, which generated revenue but negatively affected Gucci's position as an exclusive luxury brand. Maurizio Gucci hired Don Mello to put Gucci back on tracks from 1991 to 1993, Gucci's finances were still in the red. Maurizio Gucci was blamed for spending extravagant amounts of money on the company's headquarters in Florence and in Milan. Investcorp bought the remaining 50% of Guccio Gucci SPA from Maurizio Gucci in 1993, ending the family involvement in the group. In March 1995, Maurizio Gucci was shot dead in the lobby of Gucci's Milan office. His ex-wife Patricia Regini served 16 years in jail for hiring the hitman to murder him. Porno Chic Revival Don Mello was hired in November 1989 as Gucci's executive vice president and chief designer. She reduced the number of stores from over 1,000 to 180 in a move to rebuild the brand's exclusivity. She also reduced the number of items sold by Gucci from 22,000 to 7,000. She revived the bamboo bag and the Gucci loafer. She moved Gucci's headquarters back from Milan to Florence where the history of Gucci is deeply rooted. Don Mello hired Tom Ford to oversee the women's ready-to-wear collection. In 1994, Tom Ford was named creative director of Gucci. Ford and Mello revisited the 1970s archives of the brand. Ford's 1995 collection, which included the sensual white dresses with provocative cutouts, became an instant hit. Revived through the hotbot hedonism of Tom Ford's creations, Gucci also launched provocative products in limited edition such as silver handcuffs, a G-string and provocative ad campaigns such as the G-logo shaved on pubic hair. Domenico De Sol, legal advisor to the Gucci family since the 1980s and CEO of Gucci since 1994 campaigned for Gucci's leather manufacturers in Italy to keep working together and developed a partner's program to strengthen their ties. He reviewed the pricing of each product and gradually raised Gucci's advertising budget from $6 million in 1993 to $70 million in 1997. In October 1995, the company was publicly indexed on the New York Stock Exchange with an initial stock value set at 22 US dollars. Then, from 1995 to 1997, Investcorp sold its interests in Gucci for around 1.9 billion US dollars. LVMH PPR struggle over Gucci. By January 1999, the French luxury conglomerate LVMH which had been buying shares of Gucci discreetly since 1995, reached 34% ownership in Gucci Group NV. Seeking a way out of LVMH's control, Tom Ford and Domenico de Sol turned to the French financier François Pinot and his group Pinot Printemps Redoute, which later became Keering, for an emergency exit. In March, 
Pinot's group bought out 40% of Gucci at $75 a share, and LVMH's shares decreased to 20.7% in a dilution process. Through the deal, PPR also purchased Yves Saint Laurent from Sanofi and sold it back for the same price to the Gucci group. This coup d'état in the fashion world launched a cold war between LVMH and the new Gucci PPR coalition. A tension occurred in December 2000 when Gucci bought 51% of Alexander McQueen's couture house, as McQueen was also the creative designer of LVMH's Givenchy at that time. The feud around Gucci ended in September 2001 when all parties reached an agreement. By the end of 2003, Tom Ford and Domenico de Sol made it official that they would not renew their contract with Gucci PPR that ended in April 2004. Following Ford's departure, Gucci Group retained three designers to continue the success of the company's flagship label, John Ray, Alessandra Facchinetti, and Frida Giannini, all of whom had worked under Ford's creative direction. Facchinity was elevated to creative director of women's wear in 2004 and designed for two seasons before leaving the company. Ray served as creative director of men's wear for three years. Frida Giannini a Gucci handbag designer since 2002, head of accessories since 2004, and creative director of women's ready-to-wear and accessories since 2005 was appointed creative director of Gucci in 2006. Patrizio Di Marco, formerly CEO of Bottega Veneta, was named CEO of Gucci in 2008. Both acclaimed and criticized for perpetually revisiting Tom Ford's archives, Frida Giannini eventually toned down Ford's explosive porno chic props over the years from sexy to sensual, and started to experiment with androgynous bohemian styles with a 19th century reminiscence. She also developed neoclassics such as the new bamboo and the new Jackie handbags. Patrizio Di Marco focused on the post-2008 crisis with fewer styles and more mid-range products. In 2010, Gucci launched a partnership with the auction house Christie's to develop a wider repository of the brand's archives and provide an authenticity certification service. In 2011, the company opened the Gucci Museum in Florence to celebrate its 90th anniversary. Between 2010 and 2015, 220 new Gucci stores opened, bringing the total store count to 500. Post-Gender Geek Chic In December 2014, Marco Bizzari, former CEO of Bottega Veneta, was named CEO of Gucci. He was tasked to reverse Gucci's declining sales by giving a new impetus to the brand. In January 2015, Bizzari appointed Alessandro Michel creative director of Gucci. Alessandro Michel had been working for Gucci since 2002 and served as Frida Giannini's deputy and head accessories designer. During the fall show of February 2015, Alessandro Michel introduced a different Gucci one with a sophisticated, intellectual, and androgynous feel. Alessandro Michel launched the Renaissance of Gucci. He revived Gucci classics like the Double G logo, the Jackie O bag, and created iconic products such as the Dionysus handbag. With a feminized menswear, a strong feminist stance and a geek chic style, Alessandro Michel introduced post-gender props for Gucci. In September 2016, Gucci inaugurated the Gucci Hub, its new Milan headquarters built in the former Caproni Aeronautical Factory. In July 2017, Gucci announced the launch of Gucci Decor, the first time the brand tested itself in the home decoration segment. In April 2018, Gucci inaugurated the Art Lab, a 37,000 square meter center of innovation outside of Florence in Italy where new leather goods, footwear, new materials, metal hardware, and packaging are developed and tested. In November 2018, Gucci opened the Gucci Worcester Bookstore in New York, a 2,000 bookshop curated by the founder of Dashwood Books David Strettel. In April 2019, 
the company launched Gucci 9, a 500 employee network of six call centers worldwide for high end customer service. Gucci also revived its makeup collection and launched its first fine jewelry collection. In 2019, Gucci's sales reached 9.6 billion euros. In December 2020, following an agreement between Kering and Alibaba, Gucci launched two stores on Tumul. In May 2021, Gucci launched a collection of glasses, Hollywood Forever. Disney Collection Corporate Structure Gucci's holding company Guccio Gucci SPA is based in Florence, Italy, and is a subsidiary of the French luxury group Kering. In 2018, Gucci operated 540 stores for 14,628 employees. The company generated 9.628 billion euros in revenue, and 3,947 billion euros in profits. Governance in the history of Gucci, up until the end of the Gucci family era, the design, promotion, and production of Gucci products were handled by the members of the Gucci family. CEO since 2014, Marco Bizzari. 2008-2014, Patrizio Di Marco. 2004-2008, Mark Lee. 1994-2004. Domenico de Sol Creative Designers since 2015, Alessandro Michel. 2006 2015, Frida Janini. 1995 2004, Tom Ford. 1989 1995, Don Mello. Initiatives Culture In 2011, the company opened the Gucci Museum inside the 14th century Palazzo della Mercanzia in Florence to celebrate its 90th anniversary. In 2016, Alessandro Michel curated two additional rooms dedicated to Tom Ford's collections. In January 2018, following a renovation, the Gucci Museum reopened with a new name, the Gucci Garden, and a new restaurant within its walls the Gucci Osteria, managed by Massimo Bottera. The Gucci Osteria was awarded one Michelin star in November 2019. In February 2020, a second Gucci Osteria opened on the rooftop of the Gucci Rodeo Drive store in Los Angeles. In April 2017, Gucci financed the restoration of the Baboli Gardens at the Uffizi Gallery in Florence. In June 2019, Gucci financed the restoration of the historic Rupi Tarpi and Belvedere Gardens in Rome. Social In 2008, Gucci launched the Gucci Tribeca Documentary Fund, an $80,000 fund to finance movies promoting social change and presented at the Tribeca Film Festival. By 2011, the fund grew to $150,000 including $50,000 for a newly created Women Documentary Award. In 2011, with the Venice Film Festival, Gucci also launched the Gucci Award for Women in Cinema to underline the impact of women in filmmaking. From 2005 to 2015, Gucci donated $20 million to UNICEF Schools for Africa program. Once Chime for Change was created, it became the funding vehicle of the Gucci UNICEF partnership. Chime for Change was founded in February 2013 by Frida Janini, Salma Hayek, and Beyonce as a global campaign for the improvement of education, health and justice for women worldwide. In June 2013, Chime for Change organized the Sound of Change live concert which generated $4 million to fund 200 projects in 70 countries. In December 2013, Gucci inked a partnership with Twitter and Women Who Code to create the women-focused hack athon Chime Hack. Gucci sells a yellow t-shirt that reads My Body My Choice and redistributes its proceeds to Chime for Change. In July 2013, activist Lydia Emily was commissioned to paint a mural on Skid Row, Los Angeles of a woman named Jessica, who is a survivor of human trafficking. In January 2019, 
Chime for Change launched the murals campaign to gather together promoting gender equality and designed by the artist MP5. In 2020, Gucci launched an unconventional beauty ad campaign, including a model with Down syndrome. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Gucci pledged 2 million euros to two crowdfunding campaigns, the first to support the Italian Civil Protection Department, and the second for the COVID-19 Solidarity Response Fund. Environment In 2015, Gucci launched its own environmental profit and loss initiative. In October 2017, Gucci announced it would ban furs from its stores in 2018. In June 2018, the brand launched Equilibrium, its platform to communicate on its social and environmental efforts and progress. In September 2019, Marco Bizzari announced Gucci's intention to go entirely carbon neutral. In 2020, Gucci joined the UNDP-led Lion's Share Fund to support wildlife conservation. In popular culture Eponymous adjective Gucci is often used as an eponymous adjective, for example, I feel Gucci, or that's so Gucci, are used to describe feeling luxurious or referencing something as being luxurious. The earliest known instance of Gucci used in this sense is Lenny Kravitz describing his bedroom as very Gucci in the September 1999 issue of Harper's Bazaar. Movies After initially announcing plans for a movie about the Gucci dynasty in 2007, filmmaker Ridley Scott detailed specifics about his movie in November 2019, titled House of Gucci. The movie would star Lady Gaga as Patricia Regini and Adam Driver as Maurizio Gucci. House of Gucci's world premiere took place at the Odeon Lux Leicester Square in London on November 9, 2021. In 2000, Martin Scorsese had also announced plans to make a movie about the Gucci family. Guinness World Records 1974 the Model 2000 Gucci watch broke the record for selling more than 1 million units in two years. 1998, the Gucci Genius jeans set the record as the most expensive pair of jeans. The jeans were distressed, ripped, and covered with African-inspired beads and were priced at US$3,134 in Milan. Counterfeiting During the 1970s, the explosive popularity of Gucci turned the brand into a prime target of the counterfeiting industry. The Gucci workshops elaborated the brindle pigskin tanning technique that became a Gucci signature, and a tanning process difficult to counterfeit. In 1977 alone, Gucci launched 34 lawsuits for counterfeiting. By the mid-1980s, the brand was involved in thousands of confiscations and lawsuits all over the world. In 2013, the UK's Intellectual Property Office issued a ruling that Gucci had lost the rights to its GG trademark in the UK to a version of the GG logo in four categories, which encompassed garments such as bracelets, shoulder bags, scarves, and coats. However, according to Gucci, the ruling does not affect the use of its GG logo in the region because Gucci is the owner of several other valid registrations for this mark, including a community trademark for its iconic GG logo and those rights are directly enforceable in the UK. In November 2008, the website thebagaddiction.com was shut down after being sued by Gucci for selling counterfeit products. In 2013, Gucci cracked down on 155 domain names used by counterfeiters to sell fake Gucci products. In 2015, Gucci's parent company Kering sued the Chinese website Alibaba for listing a lot of obviously fake Gucci products on its website. In April 2016, Gucci's anti-counterfeiting legal actions backfired when the targeted products were the papier-mâché shaped exactly like Gucci products and burned by Chinese people during the ancestral Qing Ming Ji tradition. In April 2017, Gucci won a lawsuit against 89 Chinese websites selling fake Gucci products. In October 2018, 
Marco Bizzari warned the Chinese e-commerce giants Alibaba and JD.com that Gucci could not open shop on their websites as long as they would not remove the many fake Gucci products out of their listings. In December 2019, Gucci sued three dozen websites selling fake Gucci products. Controversies In April 2016, the UK's Advertising Standards Authority banned a Gucci online video ad because it starred an unhealthily thin model. In February 2019, Gucci removed a black balaclava sweater with a roll up collar and a cut out red lipped mouth from its shelves after it had been compared to a black face costume. Alessandro Michel responded that his inspiration came from the flamboyant Lee Bowery but apologized for the way it had been interpreted. To address this issue, Gucci launched the Gucci North America Changemakers Scholarship program dedicated to foster diversity within the fashion industry with a $5 million annual fund to support non-profits and community-based programs involved with the African American community and communities of color at large. In May 2019, the Sikhs community in India criticized Gucci's cultural appropriation of a religious item when the Italian brand commercialized turbans at $800 apiece. In July 2019, Gucci appointed a global head of diversity to address the brand's latest issues with cultural diversity. In October 2019, Gucci launched a $1.5 million scholarship program for U.S. students traditionally underrepresented in the fashion industry. In May 2019, Kering agreed to pay a $1.25 billion tax settlement with the Italian fiscal authorities following Gucci's tax irregularities during the 2011 2017 fiscal periods. During a September 2019 show that resembled a defile of mental patients, Catwalk model Aisha Tan Jones held up their hands on which mental health is not fashion was written, a reaction to the brand's inappropriate commercial use of the imagery of mental illness.